Today, we are going to learn how to draw Lewis structures. This is mainly done for covalent compounds. In order to draw a proper Lewis structure for a molecule, you first must be able to draw a correct structure for an individual element. When we are looking at this, we are focusing on the valence electrons for a particular element. We will represent the electrons as a dot or as a dashed line to show a pair of electrons. In order to fill them correctly, you'll remember from our work on electron configurations, we have one s orbital and we have three p orbitals that are found in the central atom. When drawing this, if you recall, we had an s and then we put three p's around any symbol x. And as far as the placement of electrons due to their energies, we place the first two electrons into the s sublevel. After we completely filled the S sublevel, we moved on to the P's, but because we had three orbitals of equal energy, we put one electron into each one, Hund's rule. And then we placed a second electron into each of those orbitals until they had a complete octet. There's a more modern version of bonding theory, which is called hybridization, where to maximize the number of bonds, one of the s electrons is moved into an empty p orbital. So you want to start off by placing the dots as far apart as possible from each other when there is an empty p sublevel. You'll notice here a chart is given that shows the Lewis dot diagrams for each representative element group on our periodic table. You'll notice with lithium to beryllium and then boron and carbon, we are spacing them out so we have one electron in each orbital before placing a second electron with nitrogen in the top orbital. Again, this is done to maximize the number of bonds. A covalent bond is a bond formed by two atoms that are sharing a pair of electrons. We have different types of covalent bonds based on the number of electrons that are being shared. A single bond is sharing a total of two electrons or one pair of electrons. You can see this by a fluorine molecule. If you remember, fluorine is diatomic. Each fluorine atom has a total of seven electrons in its outer shell. So if we draw in these seven electrons for each one, you can see that these last pairs of electrons or the last single electron, can then pair up to form one single bond. We have multiple bonds that can form, as we discussed in class earlier, where we have four electrons being shared or six electrons being shared. The double bonds are going to share four electrons total. The triple bonds will share six electrons total. So when I'm drawing out the molecules for oxygen, I would have a total of six electrons for each oxygen atom. And I'm going to get a bond that forms between these two and these two. So when we do that, we would have the molecule drawn with two dashed lines in between the two atoms. And then I would have those two pairs of electrons on each oxygen atom. For nitrogen, each nitrogen atom has a total of five. Now these are a little bit harder to represent because we're looking at a two-dimensional model instead of three, but I can form pairings between each of these different sets of electrons to form three different bonds. And so your nitrogen would eventually look like that. A Lewis structure for a molecule is simply showing the connectivity of all the atoms and the non-bonded electron pairs for a molecule. When we are drawing our Lewis structures, we need to keep in mind that each atom must fulfill the octet rule, which is completely filling the outer shell S and P sublevels with a total of eight electrons. There are a few examples of some exceptions that we will discuss tomorrow in class, such as hydrogen, lithium, beryllium, and boron. For each of these, because of the small size of the atom, they're not able to have a complete eight electrons in their outer shell. So hydrogen, as you recall, can be stable with only having two electrons.
Lithium can have two as well. Beryllium can be stable with four, and boron can form stable compounds with six electrons. There are also some expanded octets where elements can have more than eight electrons and utilize some of those empty d orbitals that are nearby and similar in energy for bonding. As I said, we will discuss those examples more tomorrow in class. There are many different methods to writing Lewis structures. There's no one correct way, so if you find one that you like better, by all means, please feel free to use them. However, the method that I'm going to show you, I found is the easiest method to account for all of the electrons that will produce a valid Lewis structure. I call this the Nasser method. Now, in order to do this, you have four simple steps that you need to do. The first is to find the total number of electrons that are needed for each element to have a total of eight electrons. This will be your n value. The second is to find the number of available electrons, which is simply the sum of all the valence electrons for every single atom. The s is the number of shared electrons. So you will find this by simply subtracting the number of electrons that are needed minus the number of electrons that are available. You can also divide this number by two to determine the number of bonds. And the R is the remaining electrons. These are the non-bonded pairs of electrons that will be placed around the atoms to ensure that each one has a full octet. You can determine the number of remaining electrons by subtracting your shared electrons from your available electrons. In order to draw a Lewis structure, we need to follow a couple of simple steps. The first thing is to create a skeleton structure, which is just showing the number of atoms for each element within the molecule. We need to determine a central atom, and we can do so by either choosing the least electronegative element, remember your trends from your periodic table, or by looking at the atom that can form the largest number of bonds. Typically, in a compound that contains carbon, the carbon atom will always be your central atom. A couple exceptions that can never be the central atom would be hydrogen, because it can only form one bond, or your halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, unless we have a special exception due to an expanded octet, which we will talk about in class in the next couple days. You'll connect the number of atoms with the number of bonds that you calculated in your uh, first step, again, your uh, n minus a, and you divide that by two. As a general rule of thumb, the minimum number of bonds that you would need to make would be one less than the number of atoms because you're going to connect each one to the central atom. So if I have five atoms total, I would need to make at a minimum four bonds. You can finish by placing all the lone pair electrons around the atoms to fulfill the octet rule or any of those special exceptions that we have with the number that they will follow. If you have a polyatomic ion, this is the last special case for this. If you have a polyatomic ion for your available electrons, you would either need to add or remove the number of electrons that would be involved with the charge. So if I have a minus two charge, I would add two more electrons to the available count. You would also place the molecule in brackets and then place the charge in the upper right hand corner for the structure. We will talk about the exceptions later on. Uh, we have a case where we can have the too few electrons, which would be your hydrogen, beryllium, boron, essentially anything that has an atomic number less than six. And then we have the expanded octets, which will be dealing with period three elements where we have the D sub level that is able to be involved in bonding. And then we also have something called an odd number of electrons, which nitrogen is notorious for. And so you have something that will be created where you'll have only one electron that is left within the structure. Again, we'll talk about all these exceptions in class tomorrow. Okay, so I'm now going to walk you through a couple of examples in order to show you how to use the Nasser method. The first molecule that we're going to do today is carbon tetrachloride, which is CCL4. For the Nasser method, let me get my little chart up here.
to find my number of needed electrons, remember we're trying to find the number of electrons that each atom would need to fulfill the octet rule, neither carbon nor chlorine are exceptions, so each atom will need to have a total of eight electrons. So for carbon, we would have eight. For the chlorine, where I have four atoms, each one requiring eight, that will give me a total of 40 electrons that are needed. For my available, once again, we are looking at the number of available electrons. So that's our valence electrons. And for carbon, if you look on your periodic table, it is in group 14, so it has four valence electrons. Each atom of chlorine is in group 17, so it has a total of seven electrons. So that gives me a total of 28. So I have a grand total of 32 electrons for this molecule. For my shared, again, I'm taking the N value minus the A. So I'm going to take 40 minus 32, which gives me a total of eight shared electrons. Now remember, each bond consists of two shared electrons. So if I divide this by two, that'll tell me that I need a total of four bonds. And finally, for my remaining electrons, I'm going to take the A value, subtract the S value, and so I have, for that, 32 electrons minus 8 electrons. So that will give me a grand total of 24 electrons. That will be non-bonding electron pairs. So in order to figure out my structure, as I said, we need to draw this out where I take my central atom, which in this case will be carbon, and then I'm going to surround it by the four different chlorine atoms. I have, again, a total of four bonds, so I'm going to draw one dashed line between each chlorine and the carbon atom. And then finally, I have 24 lone pair electrons that I need to add on to the atoms to have everything fulfill the octet rule. So if you notice, the carbon atom in the central has four bonds total already, so it has eight electrons. So each of the chlorine atoms going around the sides only is sharing two at this point. So each chlorine will get a total of six electrons added on to the atoms. Now each chlorine will have a total of eight electrons fulfilling the octet rule. So now every single element has been accounted for. The second example that we're going to do today is ammonia, NH3. You'll notice that I have both nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen does follow the octet rule. However, hydrogen is one of our exceptions. So instead of following the octet, it will follow a duet rule and will need only two electrons to become stable. So when we're doing our Nasser method, the N value will change for hydrogen. So let's go to our drawing out again. So I'm going to list out my N, A, S, and R. So now for my nitrogen, I would have a total of eight electrons that are needed, but for the hydrogen, I would only need two electrons instead. So now when I add these together, eight plus six gives me a total of 14 electrons that are needed. For my available, off the periodic table, nitrogen is in group 15, so it would have a total of five valence electrons. Each hydrogen atom, since it is in group one, would have a total of one electron. So my number of available electrons will now become eight. For my shared electrons, again, I will take my N value, subtract my A, so 14 minus eight, will give me a total of six electrons. And again, if I divide by two, that will give me a total of three bonds. The last step for my remainder, I take my A minus my S. So I have eight electrons minus six for a total of two lone pair electrons. So for my central atom, again, and this is one of those exceptions, we said hydrogen can never be your central atom. Nitrogen can form more bonds, so it will be our central atom. So I'm going to place that here. And then I'm going to place three hydrogens around the nitrogen. So I have three bonds total, one, two, three. And then I have two electron pairs. 
You'll notice the nitrogen now has a total of six electrons that it's sharing with the hydrogen atoms. So I'm going to place the last two electrons on the nitrogen for the lone pairs. I'm going to do one final example for you, which is going to be the H2CO molecule. You will notice in this case that we do have an exception still with hydrogen, but now I have three elements present instead of just two. So I'm going to go ahead and make my little Nasser chart to start things off. For my N value for hydrogen, we have two atoms, each needing a total of two electrons. For carbon, we have one atom needing a total of eight, and oxygen one atom needing a total of eight electrons as well. So I need a total of 20 electrons. For my available, hydrogen being in group one, I have two atoms, each with one electron. For carbon being in group 14, I have four electrons total. And then oxygen being in group 16, I have a total of six electrons. So now that gives me a total of 12 electrons that are available for bonding. So in order to find my S, I take my N minus my A. So I have 20 electrons minus 12. So that gives me a total of eight shared electrons. Excuse me. And if I divide that by two, that gives me a total of four bonds. So now for my remaining electrons, I have the 12 minus the eight. Again, my A minus my S. So that will tell me that I have four remaining electrons for this molecule. So as I begin to draw the structure, remember I said that carbon will always be your central atom when it is present. Hydrogen can never be a central atom. It can only form one bond each. So now, if you'll notice, I have four atoms. So I'd have technically a total of three bonds at a minimum. So if I draw a single bond in for each of these, you can now see I have that. However, it tells me that I need to form four bonds. So this is going to be the first example where we're going to now create a double bond. Since oxygen is the only atom that could possibly make a double bond in this structure, I'm going to draw a second line between the carbon and the oxygen. So now each hydrogen has two, so they have fulfilled the duet rule. The carbon atom now has a total of eight electrons around it by the four bonds. And so now I get down to the remaining four electrons. If you notice with the oxygen atom, it has four electrons that it has shared with the carbon atom, so it needs four more. So those remaining lone pairs will go onto the oxygen atom. I also told you you can either do it as the dots, or if you would like to, you can also do it as another dash to represent the two lone pair electrons that would be attached to the atom. One last thing, for your double bonds, you can remember these are your elements that will typically form double bonds. So you always want to watch out for those elements when you're building your structures. That's going to do it for today. Uh, try to practice the problems that are on the worksheet and we will talk about the exceptions to the octet rule tomorrow. Good luck.